For no points. Ryan D'Souza, who composed the 1812 Overture? Rossini? No, Tchaikovsky. Alex Grant, what French composer is famous for the gymnopédie? That would, that's Eric Satie. It is. Graham Somerville, Fidelio is the only opera composed by what legendary deaf composer? Ludwig van Beethoven. It would be Beethoven and Kelly Wong. Who was my grandma Esther's favorite act on the Lawrence Welk show? Neil Barclay. <laughs> no, it was a tie between Bobby and Sissy and Norma Zimmer, the champagne lady. And these are the players from the Four Fathers. <laughs> Molly Atkinson. What American writer immortalized 1920s New York society in The Great Gatsby? Oh, Fitz Fitzgerald? F. Scott Fitzgerald is right. Damian Atkins. Who wrote the searing 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings? Maya Angelou. Tony Morrison. <laughs> Maya O'Connell. What Irish master penned Ulysses and Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man? That would be James Joyce. Neil. It would, my girl. And finally, Gray Powell. What book did both my parents read in one weekend on a trip to Albany, New York in the summer of 1977? That would be Cat in the Hat. No, oh, if only they had. It was the Thornbirds. And these are the players oh. from The Devil's <laughs> Despicables. I prefer the Thornbirds miniseries. 18 started, two are still standing. There's no money, there's no trophy. There's nothing but the thrill of being able to wake up in the morning, look at your face in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, I just won the great Shaw Quiz. And now, from Television City in Niagara on the Lake, here is the host of the Great Shaw Quiz, Neil Barkley. Thank you, Tom McCamus. Thank you, players, and thank all of you at home. Well, here we are. <laughs> After six weeks of scrapping and clawing their way to success, two teams have emerged at the top of the heap and are poised to battle it out to claim ownership of the very first edition of the Great Shaw Quiz. The final round is a two-game affair. Once the dust has settled on this first match, the scoreboard will be wiped clean, and then at the end of next week's final game, the two scores will be added together to determine the winner of the Great Shaw Quiz. The excitement in the studio is palpable, so let's not prolong it any longer. You know the drill. All questions are worth 10 points apiece. In the first three rounds, you'll have approximately 15 seconds to answer, and you are encouraged to consult with each other. Let's start answering questions. In today's game, the four fathers are up first, and the first category they have to face is musical theater before and after. I will give you a short description that combines the plots or themes of two musicals that share a word or words in common. If I were to say, cockeyed optimist Nellie Forbush helps establish diplomatic relations with 19th century Japan, you would answer South Pacific Overtures. Or fathers, mm -hmm. here is your first musical theater before and after. Transvestite doctor boards cotton blossom. Oof. The transvestite doctor is Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror. Or is it Frankenfurter? No, but it's the name of the show. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, Rocky Horror. Yeah. So Rocky, Rocky, Horror Rocky, Horror, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Rocky, Showboat. Rocky Horror Showboat. Say your final answer. Yeah. You're correct. Rocky Horror Showboat. All right, number two. Dialect expert teaches Gershwin heroin to behave. My Fair Lady, Lady, Lady Be Good. Be Good? Yeah. My, My Fair, Fair Lady, lady be, good. be Good. My Fair Lady Be Good is correct. Andrew Lloyd Webber child musicians play 80s jukebox, hit, jukebox hits. School of Rock of Ages. Correct. Done. At a Swedish country estate, an Iowa band leader shows up. Uh, Little Night Music Man. Very good. <laughs> and Irving Berlin Hotel relocates to 186th Street. Good at Holiday Inn. What's the inn? Uh, inn on the park? In 186th in... Grand Hotel. In Chelsea. Is in Chelsea. And it's 186th Street. What neighborhood is that, guys? 
Damien seems Damien. to know. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, I'll just get, I'll, you got another I'll three answer, seconds. What do you do with in and the title? I I'm going to have to call it. I think Damien is not going to be able to hold on much longer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Damien? Holiday in the Heights. Holiday in the Heights oh, is correct. Oh, All right. Two ends well done. All right. <laughs> Picky. Picky. I was the only All one. right. <laughs> now to the Devil's Despicables. Oh. Your first question is, Sondheim Song Cycle sets up in Skid Row Flower Shop. Little Shop of Horrors. Something mm-hmm. little. What's uh something little? Little Shop of Horrors for sure, but Marry Me a Little Shop of Horrors. That is correct. Second question. Cockney Ne'er Do Well claims a state and moves to American West with the Gershwins. Um I don't know. The what was the one it, it's the holiday show. What did they do here? What was it? Uh no, it's called um <laughs> What was it? What was it? Um, How it quickly the land we that walk in it. Uh, oh, me and my me and my girl. Me, me and my girl. Me and my girl crazy. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Number three. That was hard. Moody French painter befriends Yankee Doodle Dandy. So Sunny in the Park with George. Sunny in the Park with George. Yankee George. Doodle Dandy. George. George, George, George. I have to call it. No. George what? George what? Sending the park with George Washington. What? Yeah. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Sunday in the park with George Washington is not correct. Oh. It's Sunday in the park with George M. Oh. Hmm. Yes, you remember what the popular M? musical What's with Joel show? Gray. George M. It's all about George M. Cohan. All right, number oh, four. Course. Oh, don't start. (laughs) Don't start. Siamese monarch engages in 1970s wife swapping. So the king. The king and I. And. 1970s wife swapping musical. 1970s wife swapping. Ran for three years. I love you. Perfect. Not change. No, Molly, that's not from the 70s. Sorry. Um, the King and I, oh, The King and I Do, I Do. Is that your final answer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what you, you were so close. That was going to be the clue, but this is The King and I Love My Wife. Oh. Those aren't oh. real musicals. That's, that that is a cycle. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, damn it, it is a real musical. All right, number five. <laughs> I thought I would make things up. <laughs> Neurotic songwriters... Vacation on a Fjord. Neurotic New York songwriters. Vacation on a Fjord. Neurotic New York songwriters. Vacation on a Fjord. Uh oh, neither, neither. I know none of these. Uh oh. No. Neurotic New York songwriters. Again, Neurotic New York songwriters show ran for many years, but it was in the 1970s. Yeah, that's that's where pretty much my thought went. Vacation on a fjord. Where? What is this show where they vacation on a fjord? Is if we (laughs) did it backwards? They they vacation on a fjord. Is is it an Ibsen musical? Mm -hmm. Is it the what? Where do you find fjords? You find fjords in Norway, in Scandinavia, Nespa. Norway, yeah. All right, Norway. five seconds. I don't know. I'm at a loss. All right, it's Starlight Express. They're playing. <laughs> they're playing our song of Norway. Who ah. knows what? All right, those were those were a little tough, guys. I'm sorry. I'll yeah. make it easier next time. So at the end of that round, the score is the four fathers at forty, oh, and the Devil's Despicables at twenty. Ooh. All right, now, guys. Come on. Don't worry. On the second round, and the second round is called appropriately. I'll second that. The oh, answers will all be people, places, or things that we're all. They're all famous for being second. All right. Four fathers went out first last time. Now we start with the Despicables. Number one, in 1984, Los Angeles hosted the Summer Olympics and overtook what municipality as America's official 
second city? That would be Chicago, Nespa. That would be Chicago, Nespa. Very good. Wow. Number two, who is the second longest reigning king or queen of England? Second longest reigning. That would be Queen Victoria. Again, you are correct. <gasps> Great. Great. In what country is the second tallest building in the world? The second tallest. Building. Is that is that Toronto? No. No, uh, so it's in the United States it would be, wouldn't it? I think. Because isn't the tallest building now in, in Dubai? It or? is. So the second tallest building. Is the CN Tower? No. The second the tallest, tallest building. The no. structure. United, I think it would be in the United States. I think that's a safer bet. Although it could be the, the what are they called? The Petrushunas Towers? The Petrus Where are those? <laughs> I couldn't possibly say. Come on, Neil. I'm, I'm done getting say, hints. I say so USA. Norway, wiped I out say all your Singapore. Hints. <laughs> Singapore? You say, I Singapore. say Singapore. I think there, it's Singapore. Singapore, Singapore. Singapore. Is the final answer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're so Taipei. close. It's Taipei. China. China. Ah. It's the Shanghai, Shanghai Tower. Tower. Is the second oh, it's the Shanghai tower. tower. And you're yeah, right. Big. Burj Khalifa is number one. I don't know where the Patronus Tower is fit anymore. All right. Maybe number four. Singapore. By number of locations, what is the second largest fast food chain in the world? By number of locations. Sub would it be Subway? I think it would I be almost Subway. wanted to say that. I'd say yeah. Subway. Yeah. I'd Subway. Go for that. All right. So you say Subway is your final answer? Yeah. yeah. No, Subway is the largest fast food chain. McDonald's ah, is number McDonald's. two. Well, close. That's a good I, question. I was surprised by that one. All right. And number five, what was the second film to win the Best Picture Oscar? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyone want to take a guess? Can you tell me the year? Uh, it would have been 1930, I believe. It was, or, oh, 28. Yeah. Does that help, Wing, Greg? Wings birth, was the first. Birth of the Wings Nation? Was, the first. was it Birth yeah. of a Nation? Oh, no, that's that your final answer. I've already earlier. told you. No, yeah, no, no, that was earlier. earlier. Um, <laughs> uh, no, Birth of a Nation was nineteen fourteen, yeah. uh, before the Oscars. The second <laughs> film to win Best Picture Oscar was The Broadway Melody. Mm. Oh, Ooh, tip of the no, tip no. of the tongue. We, yeah. we, yeah. we <laughs> all so love that so film equally. I know. All right, now <laughs> for fathers, here's your turn. First question, and I'll second that. Who was Donald Trump's second wife? Oh. Was it Marla or who was he married to before Marla? Melania is three, right? Is she? Officially. So is Ivanka number one? <laughs> uh, I think Maples is our best guess. Is that Marla Maples? I think so, yeah. All right. Final answer? Yes. Marla Maples is correct. Number two, who was the second man to walk on the moon? Oh, Armstrong was first. Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin. Final? Yes. Correct, Buzz Aldrin. Oh. What was the second of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter books? Uh, there's a Philosopher's Stone was first and... Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets? Yeah. 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 Chamber of Secrets. The Chamber of Secrets is correct. Ooh. Who was the second U.S. president to be impeached? Clinton? What, Nixon was impeached? He and was Nixon. not. He was, Johnson was, was first? There was an impeachment before that, yeah. I'm going to go with Clinton. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Final answer, Clinton? You are correct. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Richard Nixon resigned before the impeachment could happen. And five... What was the second title for the musical Away We Go, which opened out of town in New Haven on March 11th, 1943? Second title. Is it offensive? No, oh, this is the first, so <laughs> first title would have been Away We Go. What was the next one? Is 
it a group thing? What is it? Uh, I have no idea. 42nd Street kind of title. Gonna have to ask for an answer. Say 42nd Street. 42nd Street, your final answer? Yeah. Damien, you have an idea? Oh, I thought you did. Sorry. It's <laughs> o- Oklahoma. Oh. Oklahoma <laughs> opened as a way we go. All right. At the end of round two, the score stands at Forefathers 80, Devil's Despicables 40. All right, the Forefathers will get this next category all to themselves, and it's called House Tricks. You'll notice that Tricks is in quotations. That means that the answer to each question will contain the letters T-R-I-X in that order. Here we go, Forefathers. In ads for the popular breakfast cereal, what do children always tell the silly rabbit? Tricks Tricks are for for kids. kids. Very good. What is an arcane name for a female pilot? Aviatrix. Yeah. Very good. Renee Zellweger appeared in a film biography of what beloved children's author? Beatrix, Beatrix, Beatrix Potter. Potter. Yeah. Correct. Who won the third season of RuPaul's Drag Race? Oh, and the brakes are on. <clears throat> Someone Trixie. named Trixie. Trixie is- Anyone? Go with that. Trixie. Oh. I'm going to need a last name. Divine. Trixie Divine <laughs> is a fine answer. But the correct answer is Trixie Mattel. Oh, we got half. Oh, of course. And your last question, Elaine Stritch. <coughs> Elaine Stritch was the first actress to play what long-suffering wife of Art Carney's character on The Honeymooners? Uh, or Trixie. <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of another. Again, I'm going to need a last name. Uh, Carney. No, what is this character? Uh, M- M- uh, Morton. What was his name? Uh, is it? Uh, Trixie Morton. I don't know. I can't Trixie remember Morton. Your final answer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, one letter away, Graham. It was Trixie Norton. Norton. And uh, Norton. Norton. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, Devil's Despicables, you have a different category for round three. Your category is Liza Balkans. <laughs> Each answer will be about Liza Minnelli, the Balkan Peninsula, or both. <laughs> Question number one. Uh, Liza hey, Minnelli. You have had tricks, eh? <laughs> Liza Minnelli. There's no better daughter. Strange question. <laughs> Liza Minnelli is the daughter of MGM director Vincent Minnelli and what legendary actress oh, and singer? On. Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Yeah. All you right. Were complaining. Very good. Finally. I think, I think things are evening out here. What, <laughs> what Balkan country existed from 1918 to 1941 as a kingdom and then from 1945 to 1992 as a socialist federation? Yugoslavia. Final answer is correct. Yeah, that's what I was going to (laughs) say. Although considered for the role in the original stage production, it would be another six years before Liza got to play this nightclub singer in the film version of Cabaret. Hmm. Sally Bowles. Sally Bowles. Sally Bowles is correct. What easternmost city in Italy lies on the border of the Balkan Peninsula? Hmm. The easternmost. easternmost city. Would that the Balkan Peninsula? Would that be Venice? Is that your final answer? I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's very close. It's Trieste. Uh, uh, Trieste is just a little, right. little east of Venice. How do I spend summer in Trieste every year? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and our last question in Liza Balkans. My horses are stabled in Trieste. Uh, Taking her name from Sally Bowles's cry, Divine Decadence, Decadenza is one of the most popular drag queens in what Serbian capital? The Serbian capital. Hmm. Would that be Sarajevo? Um, no. No. Oh. Um, oh, cripes. <clears throat> Serbian capital. Oh, hang on that. It's on the tip of my glasses. Is it? Yeah. What does it start with? 
Uh, uh, do you look at stars with D? D. D. Yeah. I'm going to need an answer. Why don't we say if you can't think of it? Yeah, well, let's say. If, if Name it, any Serbian yeah. town. All right, Sarajevo. Sa Sarajevo, your final answer? Yeah. Final no, answer. Sarajevo is Bosnia. It's <clears throat> Belgrade. Oh, Belgrade. Oh. Yes, yeah, sir. There was a D at the end, though. There yes. was. Yes, D is Belgrade. Yes. Yeah. There was also an A in the middle of it. And yes. now yes. at the end yes. of round three, the forefathers okay. are at 110. <laughs> the devil's despicables are at 70. Now we're at the round where a seismic shift could occur. It's the lightning round. Each question is worth 10 points, and the goal is to answer as many questions as possible in two minutes. If you have an answer, don't deliberate or discuss. Just spit it out. I will take the first answer I hear. If nobody says anything, someone should yell pass. The clock will begin when I have finished reading the first question in Devil's Despicables. You should be on your marks and ready to go. Yes. In 1975, the most populous city in Vietnam changed its name to Ho Chi Minh City from what? Saigon. Correct. Bryce Canyon National Park is in the southwest part of what American state? Pass. Utah. A major center of the history of blues music, Beale Street is located in what city? Uh, that's in Memphis. Memphis is correct. What pasta name translates as butterflies in Italian? Farfalle. Farfalle is correct. The square across from the White House is named for what French supporter of the American Revolution portrayed by David Diggs in the original production of Hamilton? Lafayette. Correct. The ABC News magazine Nightline began November 8th, 1979 as a nightly update on what American news story? Say the title, the, the date again. Uh, November 8th, 1979. That would have been the, um, the, uh, uh, the oil crisis. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's the Iran hostage crisis. From what country was the first non-European recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature? America. No, India, uh, Rabindranath Tagore. Rumor has it that this junior senator from California is near the top of Joe Biden's list as a running mate in the 2020 presidential election. Kamala Harris. Correct. On what ABC TV series did we discover a hatch containing a research station built by the Dharma Boss. Initiative? Boss. Correct. What was the first show in the Real Housewives TV franchise? The Real Housewives of... Beverly Hills. No, Orange no, County. Orange County, damn. Oh. The nations of Haiti and the Dominican Republic share what Caribbean island? Called? Pass. Hispaniola. Which American state is divided into an upper and a lower peninsula? Pass. Michigan. What American government position has been filled by Dr. C. Everett Koop, Dr. Joycelyn Elders, and currently by Dr. Jerome Adams? What is the Surgeon General? Correct. What oh. mountain range stretches 2,500 kilometers <laughs> through Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia? Got an answer? Himalayas? No, it's the Atlas Mountains. All right, well done. Damien, killer. Wow, Damien. All right. We're all killers. The Devil's Despicables have pulled ahead. Now we have the four fathers up. <clears throat> as many questions as possible in two minutes. Clock will begin when I finish reading the first question. Can I just say this? I'm not seeing the questions come up above the thing. Uh, no, the questions in the lightning round do not come up uh, above the thing. I know, well done. <laughs> that, that is our intention. <laughs> All right, forefathers, enough distractions. Let's go. What is the most populous country in Africa, almost twice as large as the second most populous? Democratic Republic. Uh, no, the answer is Nigeria. What Montreal NHL team won the Stanley Cup twice in 1926 and 1935? The Maroons. Correct. What burger chain opened its first location in 1948 in the Los Angeles suburb of Baldwin Park? Burger King? Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's In-N-Out Burger. Who was the first president to appoint a woman to his cabinet? Yes. FDR. Who was the first person to swim across Lake Ontario successfully? Marilyn Bell. Correct. What animal name is given to the common crosswalk in the United Kingdom? Zebra. Zebra Crossing. Correct. What are the only operational stacked theaters in the world? Is that downtown Toronto? Yes. The, what, what are they called? 
Winter Garden. Winter Garden. Winter Garden. Elgin. Elgin. Elgin Winter Garden is correct. What governor of California was 36 on his first inauguration and 72 on his last? Jerry Brown. Correct. Who was the first woman to be nominated for vice president on a major party ticket? Oh, um, pass. Uh, Geraldine Ferraro. On what author is the character Dill in To Kill a Mockingbird based? Pass. Truman Capote. Oh. What Canadian prime minister's oh. wife created waves when she was photographed dancing at Studio 54 the night her husband lost his election? Pierre Elliott. Um, I'm sorry, I heard Pierre Elliott. It was Margaret Trudeau. Before they got their own series, what legendary what? comedy show featured the Muppets as semi-regulars during its first season? Saturday Night Live. Correct. Who is the author of My Antonia and O Pioneers? Willa Cather. Correct. Okay. What impressionist painter is famous for his 1890 series of haystacks? Monet. Correct. What African-American driver is recently called on NASCAR to remove displays of the Confederate flag? Bubba. Bubba. Wiley. Nope, Bubba Wallace. By what nickname was the 18th century English landscape architect Lancelot Brown better known? Capability. That is correct. Capability Brown is correct. And at the end of that round, the forefathers have 200, the devil's despicables 140. Did the Trudeau question have the name of the prime minister? Or the name I thought of it said wife? Canadian prime minister's wife. Uh, yes, uh -huh. Canadian prime minister's wife. Uh, what Canadian prime minister's wife created ways? Yes, so it's, it's Trudeau's wife. Oh. Pierre Elliott Trudeau's wife. I heard Pierre Elliott Trudeau come out first which is yeah, the that, correct answer, answer i believe answer to the question and let's go on then <laughs> uh -oh. we'll, we'll give the forefathers one more one more question so they should be a 210 yeah mark that down there we go yeah. all right <laughs> you better get your extra 10 points no, no, <laughs> well argued sure gentlemen well argued all right Going into the final round, the score stands at four fathers with 210 points and the Devil's Despicables with 140 points. Remember, the final is a two-game affair, so no matter who wins tonight, <laughs> next, more, next week's game could completely change all that. All right, but now 100, 100 points are at stake on the final round, which is devoted today to 20th century writers. Now, first, we will ask Devil's Despicables to turn off their sound so they don't hear the deliberations of the forefathers. Sound off, despicables. Beautiful, all right. This slinger of slang was born in Manhattan, Kansas, but didn't arrive in New York until he was 30, whereupon he gave birth to his own peculiar argot with phrases like, if I have all the tears that are shed on Broadway by guys in love, I will have enough salt water to start an opposition ocean to the Atlantic and Pacific with enough left over to run the Great Salt Lake out of business. All right, you have 30 seconds and okay. deliberate. You got it, Alex? I think it's Damon Runyon. That's the only guess that I have that has. Because the word, if he, wrote, if he wrote Guys and Dolls, the word guys is in there. He went to Manhattan, he has his own particular slang. So that's the only one I can think of is Damon Everybody Runyon. Everybody good? I'm good with that. D-A-M-O-N, Runyon. Yeah. All right, I got it written down. All right, good, very good. Wow, you guys were quick. And is down. All right, good. Now hide it as we bring the Despicables back. Forefathers, you can take your earbuds out. <laughs> and now Despicables, you're back on. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. I will ask yeah. the question again. <clears throat> and once you've got an answer, Molly will write it down. All right, the question in 20th century writers is, early 20th century writers is, this slinger of slang was born in Manhattan, Kansas, but didn't arrive in New York until he was 30, whereupon he gave birth to his own peculiar argot with phrases like, if I have all the tears that are shed on Broadway by guys in love, I will have enough salt water to start an opposition ocean to the Atlantic and Pacific with enough left over to run the Great Salt Lake out of business. You have 30 seconds. I feel like it was Kerouac. Huh. Would it be someone who wrote musicals, do you think? Or is it 20th century literature? Is it literature? Early, or just... It's early 20th century writer. I, it sounds, I don't know. I don't know why, I think it's the Kansas City. I thought he was from Kansas City. Anyway. Well, Damien Runyon is from. Oh.
All right. You know what? Where it, it, Manhattan, I Kansas don't. is where he's from. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Want exactly. to take it? Want to give your answer to Molly and write it down? What's your final I answer? Damien, give it. Damon Runyon. I don't do it. I don't know. Yeah, you think so? Why not? I have no other ideas. There you go. Me neither. Perfect. I think Kerouac is maybe a bit mid-century. Okay, Molly, you got yeah. it written down? Good, Damien. All right, let's bring the uh, forefathers back. All right, and we'll ask Ryan D'Souza, team captain, to show us your answer. Ryan, you got your answer ready? Yep. And your answer is? Damon Runyon, all right. And now Molly, we ask Molly to unmute and show us your answer. And your answer is also Runyon, very interesting, because that is the correct answer. Oh! You are both right. Damon Boom. Runyon from the plains of Kansas. Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, so the scores basically stay at the same Difference, uh, the Forefathers with 310, the Devil's Despicables with 240. So now we wipe the slate clean, and tomorrow we start again from zero. So we will see you next week, because only then will we be able to crown the winner of... The Great Shaw Wins! Kemmer speaking. The Great Shark Quiz is a Tim Carroll, Tim Jennings production.